Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is April the 20th, 420, 2021. Let's talk baseball. By the way, the hat I'm wearing is my five-year-old softball team. Thought I would give a shout out to the Purple Penguins. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk baseball. First baseball video of the 2021 season. We're a few weeks in. I see two futures plays. In fact, we'll make it three futures plays that I'm going to dabble in right here. Understand the goal with futures is to get great prices. So as you're picking up great prices, because some teams will be hot at different times of the year, your hope is to be on both sides of the play, down the road in the playoffs. In other words, you want to have a collection of teams by the end of the season in your betting portfolio who you can then either support or hedge against in the playoffs. So with that in mind, what we're really looking for here are teams that represent great value, right? The goal is to get the team at the right price and then to gain leverage when the price moves. So with that in mind, in baseball, 2021 season, let's roll out the first video. On baseball futures, I know they're expensive. I know you're scratching your head and saying, you got to be kidding. This couldn't be worth it. They're the defending champions. They are the cream of the crop. They are the class of the league. They are the Los Angeles Dodgers. You're getting them at a plus 325 right here. Unless the team suffers a prolonged slump or unless key players get injured, I don't think you're going to do much better than this price. Understand. This team had a better than 70% winning percentage last year. Understand, the team is 13-4 and four this year. They have continuity all over the place, including at manager, right? I think the Dodgers at plus 325 need to be part of your betting portfolio. You might as well get them at this price. It's expensive. You're getting quality here. This is the Tesla of the major leagues. The next pick, they're doing awful. They're five and 10. They're the team I grew up with. They're the team I still root for, the New York Yankees. Again, they're five and 10. You're getting them at a plus 650. Folks, if I told you that you could get the Yankees at better than six to one odds, I believe most would leap at that opportunity because this team talent wise is loaded. Let me point out, in last year's shortened season, the Yankees won 55% of their games. They finished second in the East, the AL East. Well, let's just talk about their rotation for a moment. Right, I'm just going to name the top three pitchers. This is how loaded the team is. Jarrett Cole, career, career, has a 1.113 whip. Again, a 1.113 whip. Folks, he's finished in the top five in Cy Young voting four times. Well, let's say you're not impressed by that. Let's say you say, hey, I, I didn't hear you say he won the Cy Young. He just finished in the top five four times. Well, Corey Kluber, same rotation, Yankees. He's won two Cy Youngs. And, of course, his whip is 1.095. Think about that. 1.095. By the way, the third pitcher in the rotation, he's not as fetid. He hasn't won the awards that the other guys have. Right? He hasn't been in the top five of the Cy Young voting. But Jordan Montgomery, career, has pitched 247.2 innings 
he has 237 strikeouts. Folks, that's almost a strikeout an inning. Now, when you're dealing with a loaded team like this, you're hoping they start the season 5-10. and 10. If you're a gambler, because that gives you an opportunity to grab value. Right? The Yankees at 5-10. and 10. Does anyone think that this team with this talent is only going to win 33% of their games all year? And look, I know Boston's out to a fast start, but this is baseball. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Let's not panic, folks. We're still in the first month. We're not even at the last week of the first month. Right? So, 5-10 and 10 team... Sign me up. If you're going to give me a plus 650, I'm being compensated for the risk. If you understand that the Yankees have very deep talent, very deep talent, right, then you're patting yourself on the back for getting better than 6 to 1 odds. Put differently, you're getting twice the return that you're getting on the Dodgers. The Dodgers are a plus 325. The Yankees are a plus 650. People are panicking because of the slow start. Don't be one of them. Now, speaking of a slow start, what if I told you that there's a team that's won eight games in a row? Eight. That actually won the American League Western Division last year. This is a playoff team. They won 60% of their games last year. And yet Vegas is giving you 18 to 1 odds. <laughs> Again, you're getting a plus 1,800 on the Oakland A's. Folks, you, you've got to be kidding me. You understand that Billy Bean is still with the team. You understand that this team is one of the best run teams in baseball. Don't believe me? Just look at last year when they won their division. Right? This isn't a nostalgia tour, folks. This is a current reality. They won the division last year. They started this year with a lot of losses, turned it around, have won eight in a row. Before the odds makers wake up and realize that this team shouldn't be an 18 to 1 long shot, you need to lock into these odds. How much better a play are you going to get during the season on the Oakland A's than a plus 1800? Let me also say, too, you know, the A's have a different philosophy. They don't really rely on starters, they rely on openers. Right? They have pitching by committee. But understand, even with the pitching by committee, career, their top two pitchers, Chris Bassett and Sean Maneka, have whips of under 1.3. In other words, this is a baseball executive's baseball team. Right? These are baseball people making baseball decisions. Oakland's a smaller market, but the A's always seem to be in the hunt. They were in the hunt last year. Folks, this year they've already busted off an eight-game winning streak. And again, we're still in the first month of the season. If you're going to give me 18 to 1 odds on a reigning division winner, that has shown the ability to string together eight wins in a row. I'm going to take that deal. This is speculative money, whereas with the Dodgers and Yankees, you actually expect to be in the league championship series in October. With the A's, I'll agree. It's more of a speculation, right? Right? But again, this is a team that's a reigning divisional champion, 18 to 1. I'll take it right here, speculative play. I'm going to include the A's in my betting portfolio here 
Understand the way this works. If the A's continue to win games, if they turn it around, if they end up with a 60% winning percentage, what they had last year, right? Then I'm guessing these odds are going to shorten considerably. They'll probably go from plus 1,800 to plus 1,200, right? So you'll actually have leverage to work with because you will have gotten them at longer odds. That's how you make your real profit on futures. Then, of course, you can bet against them strategically, knowing that you'll win if either side of the play hits. You want to create leverage that you could work with. I believe the A's at plus 1800 is a below market price that gives you an opportunity to gain leverage later in the season. Those are my opening thoughts on baseball. I understand, I'm sure there are a lot of Chicago White Sox fans and some other groups who want to comment here. Tell us about their teams. I hope you do so in the comment section of this video. To sum up, right now my betting portfolio in baseball, right now I'm picking up the Dodgers, the overwhelming favorites at a plus 325, right? They deserve the premium price. I'm picking up the struggling Yankees at a plus 650. Too much talent on the roster for this team to be going off at these odds. And I'm picking up the speculative but very well run Oakland A's at a plus 1800. Right, folks, they won their division last year. They've won eight games in a row as I make this video. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.